by Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu of California, a member of the House Judiciary and Foreign Affairs Committee. He's a former active duty officer in the U.S. Air Force and now serves as a member of the Air Force Reserves. Jeremy Bash is former chief of staff at the CIA and Department of Defense. Congressman Lou, thank you for your service. Of course, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. This treatment, I have to call it that, treatment of our top military people, how do you react to it? Uh, thank you, Chris, for your question. Donald Trump would have more credibility in criticizing our military leaders if he had actually served in the military, but he didn't. He had allegedly had a bone spur of which no credible person could verify. He escaped a draft at a time when many young people were risking their lives. And Donald Trump lacks the first element, which is courage. He didn't even have that to go serve. And so for him to criticize military leaders is really beyond the pale. What do you think of the scene, though? Um a big room over there. It's called the tank. It's where the top uh, Joint Chiefs meet to have their most critical discussions. And he uses it for a dressing down of all of them, everyone in the room, as losers. Uh, it it's seems obnoxious. Like, you know, I hate to make the Hitler connection, but it does look like those movies where you see the, the guy trashing all his generals because they're losing the war. It seems almost like an, a, an eight-year-old talking to the grown-ups. Uh, so it's really obnoxious. It also shows that he doesn't value service. The people in that room do not get paid a lot of money. Some of them risk their lives to go fight. And what we have here is a person who is largely ignorant. If you read the excerpt from the book, doesn't know a lot about the world and is saying we should be deploying military troops and making a profit off of that. Well, military troops are not oh, yeah. mercenaries. We should not be making a profit. The military leaders should not have been dressed down like that. And frankly, I think the president really should apologize to those military leaders. Someone years ago told me, advised me how to deal with gov government officials. He said, I want to be not too crude about this, but these are the words. I'll clean it up a bit. He said, people don't do their best work when they're being peed on. And here's the president trying to get good work out of our top leaders by humiliating them. It doesn't work. No, and the context of this was, as you referenced, in the tank where the Joint Chiefs meet. I've been in that room. There's an oil painting of Lincoln and his generals that hang over that table. And the most consequential decisions are made in that room. And here comes President Trump in 2017 after he's president. And his own advisors realize this guy doesn't understand the world. He doesn't care to understand the world. We have to brief him up. And in that briefing, he shows, number one, that he's arrogant. He knows it all. Number two, he's disrespectful. He's condemning them for their expertise when, in fact, that's what they're bringing to him as his advisors. And third is he's neo-isolationist. He's basically saying we shouldn't have a globally deployed force. We shouldn't even have a military out there in the world, which is totally inconsistent with national security. Well, it's the kind of a guy talking at a bar somewhere, just BSing. Yeah, you know, here's my attitude. I want to show it to you. Anyway, got some news again. As I mentioned earlier, the House released new material tonight from Lev Parnas, including the mess text messages that show extensive contact between him, Parnas, and a staffer to guess who, ranking Republican on the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes. The texts show that Derek Harvey, a senior investigator for Congressman Nunes, was working with Parnas to acquire material about Ukraine's alleged involvement in the 2016 election, the old theory, the old conspiracy. The new evidence also includes a slew of new pictures of Parnas with the president's son, Rudy Giuliani, and Indiana Senator Mike Brown. Congressman, Congressman Lou, what do you make of this? One of your colleagues who sits as ranking Republican on the Intel Committee investigating himself? No, doesn't matter. It doesn't go after himself, even though he's party to this whole thing. Well, let me first disclose that the lawyer for Devin Nunes wrote me a letter threatening that Devin Nunes will sue me if I don't apologize for saying that Devin Nunes conspired with Lev Parnas and conspired to undermine our own government. Well, it turns out that based on text messages and the record and the amazing interview on the Rachel Maddow show, uh, that I'm right. Truth is a defense. And I basically told uh, Devin Nunes' an attorney that they can take that letter and shove it. So with this new additional evidence that came out, it's even more damning, especially for the staff to Devin Nunes. And I think right now, Devin Nunes should not be sitting on the House Intelligence Committee. He needs to be removed. What I don't understand is legislators have a job. That's their lane that they work in. They vote. 
They uh, write legislation. They try to figure out what's wrong and try to write it. They're not oper operational. They don't. They don't operate like Ollie North got in trouble for being an operational. He's an advisor to the president. He's running all this money into the Contras. To, you know, running missiles over to Iran. I mean, these guys. Why would a vice? What about you? Work in the government in many capacities. Why would a U.S. congressman be a guy running down to the old executive office and getting some stuff to come back down the next day and give it to the West Wing, working as a staffer basically for the president? This president. That's Trump. right. His his constitutional responsibility under Article 1 is to be an overseer, to conduct oversight, to actually be a check on executive branch power and policy. Instead, he's gone to the other side. He's basically decided, I'm going to work for Trump. I'm going to help him advance this false narrative about Ukraine. I'm going to help him politically so we can win re-election and maybe reward, we, reward me with more. Congressman, again, to thank you for your service and your uh, being here tonight. Here we are on the very eve of a Senate trial for this president. And yet, as we sit here, the news kept coming through over the transom, through the door, rushing like a flood. We keep learning more now about surveillance of a U.S. ambassador over in Kiev. Uh, it looks like she was being harassed or they scared her enough to have her yanked out of the country. She was so some had such reason to be afraid. So what is going on here? There's so much information. Are we going to get this in the trial or is it going to be kept out of the door? We absolutely need a full and fair trial in the Senate. I think it's ridiculous that a simple question such as, should we have witnesses in a trial can't be answered by a number of Republican senators? The answer should, of course, be yes. I mean, whoever heard of a trial with no witnesses and no documents? And then we should take a step back and understand that Donald Trump is not only the third president in U.S. history to be impeached, he's also the first Republican president to be impeached, and it's for abusing his power, soliciting foreign interference in our election, and no one is above the law. No one should be treated differently because they have a new president. And every trial has witnesses and documents, and that should be the kind of trial we have in the U.S. Senate. Well said. Thank you so much. U.S. Congressman Ted Lieu of California. Jeremy Bash, thank you for your expertise and your service.